even when I was young, I remember when I was when I was 19, or I was 18, actually, and I was uh, getting ready to go to college, I was getting ready to go to IU in the shirt. Um, getting ready to go there, and I worked all summer at the, as, a, as a graduate. I was trying to get enough money to save it up for a car. And at the end of the summer, I had money, and I decided I could So what did I do as, a, as an 18-year-old kid? Uh, I got some, some mutual funds. Charles Wild account, you know, people were like, what? You know, none of my friends understood that. What do you want that for? What do you want to spend it? I want to save my money. I want to be smart with it. So um, I get down with college, ended up getting on the fire department. And as soon as I did that, um, you know, at this point, I was uh, responsible for a lot of stuff. It was a couple years after I'd gotten out of college, but I was responsible. I had, had three kids. I had a wife. And they were looking at me. I had a newborn, actually, born like the week before I got in the fire department. So, um, my wife wasn't working, but it was all basically me. I had to do everything. So uh, when it came to that, I wasn't making very much money my first year of the fire department. It was, uh, I know it sounds like they, they do pretty well, but first year is very tough. And I remember when I'd get my paycheck every month or every week, I would, uh, I would put about 25% of my money would go straight to my savings account. And I don't, it was really tough. Certain times my wife would be like, hey, we would need to go on vacation. The kids have never been to Florida. And I'd say, we don't have that money right now. Um, what happens if something goes wrong? What if, what if somebody's caught to eyes? What if, you know, there could be tons of things. I'm not willing to, to, to sacrifice that money to take a vacation right now. So, after a year, I'd been able to save up enough money. I was able to put a down payment on the house. Got a house, you know. It was a small house, three bedroom, 1,200 square foot. But everybody was, you know, better off than living in an apartment. Did the same thing the next year, had a few fights, saved up a little bit more money. Uh, I bought a new car, not a new car, but a used car, but I paid it off. Um, you know, so I bought a $10,000 Jeep, and uh, because I wasn't willing to spend, you know, $13,000 by pay making the payments, I wasn't willing to do that. I'd like to pay it off all at once. So I did that the following year, except for the money, I was able to put it um, down for, for a lot. I bought a lot out in New Palestine. So I was able to put a lot of money down towards that. I had to borrow some from my mother, um, but, I, but I paid all that off. I wasn't, wasn't willing to just go very deep into debt. Um, the next year, I was able to save up enough money where I was able to put it down for a house. Now, uh, the reason I tell you all this about how I was doing things was I'm not willing to go ahead and lay out a lot of money that I don't know I can pay for later. That's the type of person I am financially. I don't think anybody really in our government has that same mentality. I think they're wanting to just go out and spend money and, you know, it doesn't matter. That's not up to them. That's not their money. They don't really understand fiscal discipline like, like, like I do, I don't feel. Um, and another thing, when I did, I was able to start winning some pretty good money from my fighting career. And when I, got, when I did that, it seemed like the, the first thing I always want to do with my money, as soon as I got a bonus check, I want to put that right towards my house. I was always put it towards the principal. Uh, a lot of people, when they would win theirs, they would go buy a new car, or they'd buy this and that, and I felt like, I can't do that. I still owe somebody money. I owe the bank money. i got to pay that down. i can pay that off. And kept doing it, so I paid it off. Now, uh, the reason I tell you that is because, I mean, I've worked hard for my house. I mean, I'm very proud of the fact that I've paid my house off. Um, that's my house. That's my property. That's mine. And it kind of really frustrates me when I see certain state legislators right now have proposed bills in the past few years with the, the clause of eminent domain in there. They feel that they can take people's property. And they can, and as a government, they can take it and give you what they consider fair price for it. That's unbelievable to me. I mean, you know what I've gone through to get that house? I've had many, many hours in the ring, many hours getting punched. I've bled a lot of get stitches all over my face for it. Is to think that they can come in and try to take my property and give me what they consider fair price, that's unacceptable to me. That's my property. Totally disagree with that. Another property right now, I'm really uh, big on right now. I'm sure you, some of you guys are studying. I believe it's Barr versus the state of Indiana. Um, gentleman was arrested for not letting the police into his house when they didn't have a search warrant. They tried to come in, he tried to stop them. Uh, he's been arrested and has been upheld in our Supreme Court. Basically, you're getting rid of the Fourth Amendment. And you know you can come in somebody's house without a search warrant, uh, no probable cause. Just uh, you can come in whenever you want. And you don't think that that privilege would be abused? I mean, if I were 
in the state center right now, I think that'd be the first thing I'd try to address right there. This cannot, well, I mean, <clears throat> we already talked about the Tenth Amendment, you know, we don't follow that anymore with the state's rights. Now it's, looks like the Fourth Amendment too. It looks like they're working the way down. I mean, maybe we're going to get to the first and second next. So we have to do something right now for it so we can, we can stop this type of thing. And uh, I think that'd be a stand I'd take right away about you know, the Fourth Amendment. That's unbelievable. Um, you want, to, you want to open up some questions or anything? Sure, sure. Uh, you, may have, uh, you may have touched on this or implied it, but what, what is your opinion on the Federal Reserve? Uh, Federal Reserve, um, wow, that's a lot going on with that one. Well, it's kind of a, it's a little bit of a weird system we got here. Where mm -hmm. they're, uh, it's kind of, are they a governmental system? Are they not? I mean, they're not, but they kind of act like they are at certain times. Uh, I'm a huge believer in, you know, sound money big fan of the gold standard. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't really see how you can ever have a completely fiat money system where there's no limit to what you can do. And we, we just keep you know, creating money, you know, exporting our inflation and everybody else, and uh, there's really no rhyme or reason to it. We can't find out anything about what they're doing. I find that hard to believe. <clears throat> um, actually, you know, I'd, I'd love to see any of these uh, bills go through with Prop all other guys trying to get the, off the Fed. I think people would be shocked to find out where the money's going, how we're loaning money to other countries, you know, central, to foreign, uh, foreign banks, you know, central banks, and how that's happening, and we're, we're not knowing about it, and they're taking our money and doing that. It seems really kind of very criminal at minimum, so treasonous, I have to say. So um, it's amazing to me that that system is still going on and that we allow that to happen. So. Um, this is your. Is this your first attempt to run for anything? Absolutely. Um, I have zero political background as far as being involved in the campaign. If you uh, if you get elected, do you plan on running for higher office someday? You know, to be honest with you, I haven't even thought about that. Um, only this is really the only office I want right now. I want to be, try and do whatever I can to make Indiana as strong of an economic center as possible. That's kind of my main area of wanting to run. Is I feel. Um, much like a uh, gentleman touched on earlier with the Federal Reserve and with a lot of, uh, I think there's going to be a lot of inflation happening here. I think our, our country is going to get in a progressively worse situation out there. So when that happens, I think um, a, lot of a lot of companies are going to go overseas. I think that's going to, it's already happening right now. You look at them, they're saying, um, overtaxed and overregulated, I'm going to go out of the country and I can have that problem. Well, I do think there's going to be certain companies who are not going to want to leave the country. For logistic reasons, shipping stuff in is going to be a nightmare. Just certain reasons they're going to want to stay here. I would love to see Indiana be a place, the first place on their list that they think, hey, if we want, we want to stay in the country, where do we want to go? I want to go to Indiana. I think we have a lot of good attitudes right now. We have a couple of professional teams. That's big. We have a Crossroads of America. That's big. Uh, cost of living is pretty cheap right here. That's big. I think. Not get too regulation. I, I want people to know that this is an area that they need to try and come to to grow their business, not just uh, not just survive, but to thrive. So, awesome. So, <clears throat> how did you actually like? Basically, the political system is full of a bunch of BS. Sure. You can have all the best intentions in the world. Sure. You can even be elected to the position where you could do something. But the simple fact is that you, if it's you want to do something and fourteen other people want something against you. It ain't gonna happen. Sure. Um, or you have like what Obama has, where you've got two parties who are bickering and fighting back and mm -hmm. forth, and he can't get jacked in <coughs> one way or the other mm -hmm. just because they're acting like little children. Sure. What would you do to actually try to get around those issues to try to either work with them, work around them, sure, or fight That's against them? That's very good. Um, one thing I've noticed is uh, <coughs> about two years ago, um, I was called for the Indiana State legislator for um, a resolution they gave me for my fighting. And I was able to um, spend some time with them and I had to do something at a pre previous engagement to talk with them about getting the laws uh, regulated so we could have MMA here. Uh, that led to the UFC coming in. So I got to sit down and have lunch with a lot of the guys. I got to talk with a lot of legislators. I got to know them a little bit. And uh, judging from that, I know that I think I could have a great deal of influence on how they not really have a vote, but I think they would listen to me. I think they would um, understand exactly that I'm more of a common sense person. I'm not playing any politics. But I've talked to some of those guys about me running 
to the state senate this year, um, several of them said, look, you're the type of guy we need in here. You're the type of guy we want in here. You're not an attorney. You're not someone just with your own intention. We know you're leaving the UFC for a reason, and that's to come here and try to do something for the state. And we think that's fantastic, and that's what we want. Um, I notice a lot of the people in there right now, it seems like you're trying to... I'm a big fan of this uh, anti-incumbent movement that's going on. And it seems like the people who get in there are becoming younger and younger with different ideas. These are the people I'm talking to who are saying, Chris, you're the type of person we want, and we identify with what you're saying, and we would like to be part of what you're talking about. So uh, I think we can definitely get a good core of people who are of that mentality. And we're trying, trying to get more of that you know, thought process and that mentality to be in the States. And, trying to get all these people who are worried about themselves and have been there for 20, 30 years, it's time for them to go. So I'd be very supportive of anybody trying to go against that type of a system, trying to, try to get the uh, more of a more type of thought process that we have right here instead of the old process of the, the good old boy system of uh, I'm going to take care of you and then when I leave I'm going to give it to my successor and I'm going to give it to my successor and they just keep that system going. That's a, a cycle we need to, we need to break. So. But they're obviously going to fight against that cycle, so what would you do to help prevent that? Like, would you basically go to the media, try to get media support? Would you uh, absolutely, try to find absolutely, and, and just try and get people more of, you know, what's going to beat these people with a lot of money and all the grassroots? Um, some of the people I've talked to we have gotten in, uh, it just takes, you know, a lot of support by, by the grassroots movement, and if we can get other people who have the same mentality to throw their weight to behind these other candidates who are looking to get in who have the right intentions, I think that goes a long way. Um, you know, myself, I'm pretty fortunate. I know people uh, in the UFC, I know people on the Colts, I know people on the Pacers. I'm going to try and do a lot of stuff where I can get these people involved and you know, letting people know how important it is to vote. I would love to get more people ready to vote because I think if you're getting the younger crowd and they're going to vote, they're not going to keep, you know, th these older people who have been in for 20, 30 years, they're counting on nobody showing up at the polls and they're counting on the same few thousand people who vote for them every time to show up. If we get more people involved in that process, I think it's going to be huge. They're going to, they're going to vote new people in. They're not going to continue with the same old way. So I think that's a huge step, um, just getting the word out there and trying to get, you know, how do you get young people involved? You go to uh, one of their strengths, things that they like. They like sports. They like athletics. They like to hear from, you know, younger people who, who can identify with what they're saying. Yeah. So.